Okay, the word. Okay, it looks like this is part two. <laughs> real quick. Okay, good. So far, so good. Um, hopefully, didn't lose. There we go. Oh, no problem. Uh, I, I welcome any information I can get. started to uh, talk about uh, the tracing is that um, usually I would trace my own work to kind of improve on it because I could you know there were sometimes you never you're never quite sure what you want your people to be wearing so you go through different possibilities and when you all all you have is paper that's kind of what you do um, I actually had one uh, picture that I'm pretty sure I had like Aw. I mean, I, I appreciate it, but I can, I, I can look it up later and, you know, maybe actually take the time to listen to some of those, uh, and watch some of those animatics. Um, I had one, uh, picture that had, like, pretty sure I did 11 in pencil and about 11 in uh, ink. That's that's a lot of paper. Huh. Is... Wait, 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 wait. Is that the one with the song Michael in the Bathroom? Yes, I did. I did watch the one animatic of it. Uh, I can't remember who did it, but it was so good. And I actually shared it with my brother because his name is Michael. And um, yeah, that that animatic and the song reminded me about him a lot. Um, especially since you know we're both kind of introverted and. Um, uh, he. he he, he tends to be kind of a whipping boy, unfortunately, sometimes for people, and I know he definitely uh, used to be one for me when we were kids. I've luckily grown out of that, um, but yeah, um, yeah, he liked it too. Um, I'll have to check out more. Um, oh, great, where was it? Uh, another thing I plan on doing is um, critiques, uh, like if anyone actually wants me to like, Im you know, maybe give suggestions for improvement, um, preferably on drawing. I could probably do it on reading too, um, but the problem with reading is that it, you know, always takes more time. Uh, visually it's a lot easier to um, critique and work on offer suggestions for a more visual medium but for my reviews I was also thinking about maybe using that to expand some of my fan art because I don't do a lot of fan art um, I mm, I guess I fell out of it in lieu of some more, uh, original things. Um, it is a good song. Um, it, 
it it really is I when I first uh, actually watched that video I'm pretty sure I listened to it on repeat for a good while uh, <laughs> um, let's see. I already kind of gave my history as far as comics go um, well ElfQuest uh, I don't know it's Highly unlikely that too many people have read ElfQuest, but uh, this character that I'm currently working on uh, right now, this picture, is from ElfQuest. Um, oh, uh, oh, no problem. Um, uh, what I'm drawing on is a Cintiq 13 HD, uh, not the touch version. I wish it was the touch version when I got it, it was supposed to be the touch version, but it turned out to not be, but that's, I guess, what you get when you, uh, uh, buy through eBay, so, uh, I mean, it certainly explains why it was, uh, I think, uh, $700 instead of, like, 800 or a 1000 um, it... Huh, you're not a little stupid. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely a tablet. Um, it's a, a Wacom Cintiq. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. Wacom. Wacom. I think it's Wacom. Um, it is definitely easier to draw on because I, uh, up until I got this and I uh, reasoned to myself when I got a job as a graphic designer that uh, this was a business expense because it was for my job. <laughs> uh, I was so happy to get it. Um, prior to that I had a uh, I had two Intuos 2's uh, both Cintiqs um, that are still functional but unfortunately, they have a serial cable, a serial port uh, connection, which most, a lot of modern computers don't do well with serial port uh, peripherals. Um, so I got an Intuos 4, um, which worked really nicely, uh, and a an Asus, Asus, uh, since it's supposed to be like the back end of Pegasus, uh, an Asus uh, EP121 that I ended up incidentally turning into a BP121 because I upgraded the Windows to uh, a professional edition uh, when I upgraded. And it is a Windows-based tablet that actually has the Wacom uh, technology in it, so it also comes with a pen, and you can draw directly on the screen. That, even though the battery life was horrible, it was nice being able to take it out and uh, use it to sketch things um, in full Windows programs. Uh, but this is a Cintiq uh, 13HD, and yes, uh, it's very nice being, you know, much like on the tablet, being able to actually see what you're doing um, versus having this kind of disconnect from one of the Intuos um, where you kind of guesstimate where your uh, cursor is on the screen, and every time you lift it, you have to find your spot again. Um, but yeah, what, what spurred me initially to do this, uh, video was the fact that the last, the, the final issue of ElfQuest came out, and if you haven't read it, I definitely suggest reading it. Uh, this is Cutter, the, uh, main character, the protagonist. Um, he is chief chief elf of a tribe called the Wolf Riders, and yes, they do actually wide r ride wolves. I can talk, um, 
and it's it's very much a fantasy adventure story and then later on uh, there's some kind of sci-fi elements like space so I guess it's kind of sci sci-fi fantasy or science fantasy um there are there are, it, it's very realistic um like it touches on very real uh things um the the story is basically that um the elves were initially a group of aliens who were coming to earth because their world was dying and so they took on these elven forms and were supposed to essentially come to the equivalent of our like uh, middle middle ages uh, you know when we believed in magic and fantasy and things like that as real and they were going to try to kind of make peace with humanity um, Unfortunately, uh, a kind of mutiny by trolls, uh, or the little creatures that would end up becoming trolls, um, caused a malfunction in their uh, ship that took them back to essentially the caveman times. And they were greeted with kind of a not so pleasant experience. Uh, the one, the very first one that tried to extend a hand in, you know, brotherhood, got his head bashed in with a club. Um, and a whole bunch of them died, and a bunch of them fled, uh, and ended up trying to make it work on the world at the time, um, and ended up becoming little short elves. Like, Cutter here. Um, there, everything is handled. I want to say even the adult situations are handled beautifully. Um, there, in the fourth graphic novel, there is an orgy scene, um, which uh, actually let me see if I can look it up real quick. Uh, sure someone's got a picture of that particular scene somewhere. Well, this isn't the actual scene, but this is a scene adjacent to it. Oh no, there it is. Yeah, this this is the kind of this is about as far as it goes. You don't really see anything happening. You just see kind of everybody. Is the video even going? Let's see. Huh. I'm feeling my stream is not. Or I could just not have it playing. Yep, that'd do it. Okay. <laughs> you can tell I don't do this very often. Um, but yeah, this is about uh, as bad as it gets. Um, everything is handled pretty much with um, maturity. And uh, the way she portrays it is actually very, I mean, for the most part, it's pretty beautiful. Um, yeah, see, like here, everything's covered um, where it's potentially, you know, flag raising for 
adults. Um, I actually was reading this uh, when I was about uh, 11, 12. My, my best friend introduced me to it by bringing over the fourth book, funny enough, that, his, that uh, her brother had from um, one of his friends. Um, I still actually have that copy of the book, too. Oh, oh, no problem. Did you did you see the scenes? Um, it's uh, everything. I mean, they, they, it's not just um, there. There's some violence. Um, there is some. I guess they would say adult situations. Okay. Well, I shall still be here. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Have fun at your rehearsal. Um, yeah. This past week, actually, last week was the the last issue of ElfQuest, ElfQuest Final Quest. Um, actually, uh, if you if you want to read it, um, they have like all everything except for the final quest uh, uploaded on elfquest.com. Like, you could go to the site and just read from the beginning through all of it. And it's it's a great adventure story. It's a really... And especially if you continue on to read... God bless it! Okay. And we're back, I guess. Come on. Why are we messing up? Okay. Um, it's an excellent adventure story. It's you—you you kind of follow uh, Cutter through his growth, and as I was saying, I—I I first started reading it when I was like eleven or twelve. Uh, that's when I started really getting into comics in general. So like. Um, X-Men, and it was mostly X-Men, and some Excalibur, X-Force, X-Factor, those kinds of things. Um, but ElfQuest kind of grabbed that part of me that, or that part of my attention that liked uh, legend that liked the Princess Bride that liked um, Labyrinth and the Dark Crystal. Um, ElfQuest started in 1978 by Wendy and Richard Peeney in a magazine called Fantasy Quarterly. And It, funny enough, has gone on for, I'm pretty sure exactly, 40 years. Come on. Why are we misbehaving? But 
it was not the standard superhero fare that I had uh, come to be familiar with from comic books. It, like I said, it was very much a fantasy, and I very much ended up uh, completely falling in love with the art, which, uh, I mean, I had it up earlier, it was really, it, it was really interesting, and I think, uh, looking back on it, part of what really made it interesting to me is that there are, now, again, that I look at it, obvious, uh, anime influences. Uh, the elves have, you know, these large eyes, and, um, every, everything is very pretty. Yeah, the elves are very pretty. Humans, uh, humans are hit or miss in it, but... You basically follow Cutter, um, in his adventures, through most of it. There is a, um, some side stories where, uh, there are some side stories where it's different, um, and you're following other people, or elves, <laughs> um, but much of Elf Quest and the way the way they view things, um, it was very much kind of a progressive comic before there really were progressive comics in, and it wasn't very, it wasn't really in your face with it. Like, there are definitely some kind of alternative lifestyles, what we would consider alternative lifestyles that the elves practice, like, um, polygamy, uh, polyandry, um, uh, homosexuality is touched on in it, um, and like I mentioned, I mean, the s series, the way Wendy, um, writes the way she shows it, it's all very frank. And I think it was that frankness that I appreciated. It's like there was no, you know, when two characters were, you know, about to get it on, it wasn't, um, you know, fade to black. You know, you, you might get a peek of what's going on or a hint at it, but um, it wasn't treated as sexy for them to be having sex. Um, it was natural. It was just part of life. Um, like, there are two or three, uh, maybe more, um, births that they actually show. Um, there's, uh, I mean, they don't get you all up close and personal down, you know, where the action's going on, but you see, you know, the mother in labor, and you see the baby pulled out, all kind of slimy and stuff, you know, and it's treated, again, with a frankness that some people might appreciate. I suppose that um, kind of goes along with the time it came out. Um, funny enough, I think my favorite story out of uh, Wendy and Richard Peeney is that they met through, I believe it was through uh, writing the, the letters columns in the back of a Silver Surfer comic, I believe it was. And that is kind of awesome. You know, you meet, you meet the person you end up, you know, marrying 
through a shared love of a medium. Um, but she's elf mom now, and he's elf pop. Uh, these particular scenes I'm working on here are, are actually, uh, these two images up top, um, are kind of, I guess you could say kind of lifted from the ElfQuest comic. Um, the one over here on the left that I'm working on right now is when Cutter, uh, when his first, well, that's kind of a spoiler, uh, when his kids are born, cubs, they call them cubs, except, uh, in the Sun Village where they're kitlings or the, um, go back tribe where they're called fawns um i think the gliders call them children um but yeah he he ends up having twins with his uh mate lita and um, twins is pretty much, it's pretty much unheard of. Like, they, they almost always have one child. Elves usually have one child. And he's kind of a, an exception in that respect, in that, you know, they had, well, they're an exception in that respect, in that they had two at once. Um, but this is not at all turning out how I wanted it to. It, it meant a lot to me, the story, the characters. I, uh, my best friend and I, the one who, uh, introduced me to this. We were both army brats. So there was moving and, you know, making friends and moving away from friends and having friends move away from you. Uh, so I tended to draw a lot, read a lot, and definitely got into comics a lot. <laughs> um, Yeah, this scene is where he walks out with his cubs in his arms. Such a proud daddy, uh, holding the twins wrapped up. And, uh, the one character, Pike and Skywise, had a bet going on, like, you know, is it going to be a boy, is it going to be a girl? Um, and turns out both boy and girl. Um, the world of ElfQuest is very interesting in that, in a lot of ways actually, but in that the elves, uh, for the most part, um, when they get together, um, they can be love mates, which you know, like it says, or as it says, um, basically means that, uh, they love each other, they're, you know, they, they bum buglies, you know, they just have fun. They, they have fun, they love each other, they might, you know, have issues, like, especially if you, uh, read about Cutter here's parents, <laughs> they definitely had issues, because his dad, his dad was kind of, kind of short-tempered. And, uh, once made the very, very big, shocking mistake to the rest of his tribe of, uh, like, backhanding his mother. This was prior to him being born. Um, 
and suffice it to say, she gave him a serious cold shoulder for a long time, which caused him to get irritable and stuff, and uh, that whole thing is a really interesting uh, story in itself. Um, but the course of true love never did run smooth, and the same could be ca said in the case of Cutter and Lita, which uh, definitely did not go smooth, particularly since when they first met, uh, Lita had already had a uh, suitor who very much wanted her. Um, but there are all the different kinds of elves. There are. And, and they've got powers, individual powers, that, um, to do things. Like, there's one called Fred Lance, who is a plant shaper. He is able to make plants grow, um, guide, you know, guide their path and how they grow, etc. Um, there are, uh, Lita is, is a healer. And she comes actually from a different uh, tribe called the uh, Sun Villagers. I have a feeling I am not going to. <laughs> I am definitely not going to finish this before uh, I decide to cut the live stream. Um, but it helps if I'm on the right. Let's see if I zoom in, it's a little better easier for me. Um, I, I just, I cannot suggest, um, reading ElfQuest enough. And if you can, you know, find it. Uh, definitely read uh, the final quest. Um, it's it's a great story. It, it really is. And I think, honestly, I think if, if more people read it and actually read into it, th I think they would. Uh, I think the world could possibly be a better place because of it. Mm. The his hair's not that dark, except his eyebrows. There were couples. I mean, obviously, there were couples in this comic book, and there were certain ones that I shipped a little harder than others. One of them was uh, a couple called uh, Moonshade and Strongbow. And they they were the they weren't the old married so much as nightfall and redlands but they were definitely they were the old staunch you know republican couple you know they weren't they weren't always in the right um they were very much the traditionalists who wanted to tightly follow the way which was uh, which is the kind of the elf 
or the wolf rider, the wolf rider way, um, of not, of basically living in the moment, not, you know, revealing yourself to humans, because, yeah, and, uh, one of the rules, uh, actually that came up in one of the or I think it was the last, not this last one that finished it, but in the comic book previous to this last one, um, was that one of the rules of the way was that life bearers, life bearers among the, uh, wolf riders when trouble is going to happen uh, they're expected to tree hide which they live in a tr they usually live in a really big shaped tree so um, tree hide means basically you stay inside and you don't come out you, you stay safe and considering uh, another fun fact about the elves in ElfQuest is their gestation period is two years. It takes two years for an elf baby to cook in the oven. And we, yeah, I do not envy that considering it takes us nine months. <laughs> um, but the tree hide is to keep life bearers safe so that they can continue to have a species, so to speak. And I keep trying to knock dust off the screen as if it's dust that I'm seeing. It's not. It's like areas where darker stuff is coming out. Um, And the yeah the the staunch Republican type two elves uh, are the ones who are who who try to uphold this way no matter what. While Cutter, um, I mean, he doesn't intentionally act completely against it, but he definitely does move very far away from the way. He ends up learning what it's like to count time to remember. Um, he has memories that extend beyond like there is one point where uh, this one elf girl adopts a human baby and raises, raises him as her own. Um, the tribe at first is not too keen on this because human babies are loud and, well, they're human. But nobody in the human world wanted him initially because he had a berry, berry colored birthmark on his face. And so they were just kind of, kind of leave him out to be taken by the elements. But Tylee found him and took him and raised him as her own. And actually, even um, she actually nursed him too. Once uh, she was able to kind of get a milk production going and she raised him to be a young man and eventually he decided to go back to the humans and he was initially rejected but eventually when he proved that he was a great hunter and whatnot he eventually uh, was accepted and actually became their leader of the uh, group he joined in the end 
Um, but Cutter mentions to one of the characters, um, Little Patch, which is what Tylee called him. She mentioned him to uh, one of the other wolf riders, and they were just kind of like, who? <laughs> to which Cutter just kind of said, never mind, because he knew that they wouldn't remember because their memories, you know, they don't, they don't try to remember. And which, unfortunately, kind of leads them to making some of the same mistakes sometimes um, when they adhere too much. Um, but, yeah, Moon, Moonshade and Strongbow, which were the conservative ones, um, were definitely my favorite couple, mostly because... To me, they seemed very much like a relationship that I would want to emulate, in that she she supported him, she was very loyal to him. Um, okay, that's turning a little better. And it was very obviously it were very obvious that they were very much bloody hell Or I'm going to end up with like three copies of this. Maybe I should take it down to ten frames per second. Full Metal Alchemist. Whew, not sure how I feel about that. Oh, shoot. I'm gonna have to turn off my laptop and turn it back on. I have to summarize and retouch on, like, everything. <laughs> Just to make it easier. That way it's not across three, uh, three videos. Let me just... I don't want to delete the second one. Okay. So. I guess without questions. Um. Quick summary of everything I had said prior. Let's see, plans. Um, I plan on finishing the Dead Girl Walking animatic, which, yay. Um, after that, I'm planning on starting with uh, Alexander Hamilton um, from Hamilton. Um, I, I've noticed that there have been uh, uh, takedowns and mutings and, you know, general copyright notices. Um, so I may, when I do them, just uh, do the animatic and have kind of a start point, like start playing your music here. Um, so that um, whoever's watching it can just play their own copy of the song. Uh, I may offer um, copies with sound, maybe through my Patreon, Patreon, however it's pronounced, uh, simply so that I am hopefully less likely to get the copyright hits, because I definitely don't want 
that um, along with the um, animatics or along with the Hamilton animatics I definitely am planning on continuing with the Heathers uh, after Alexander Hamilton from Hamilton I plan on going on to do beautiful and basically doing one then the other then the other um, through to the end of Heathers and definitely to the end of Hamilton but since there are so many more of Hamilton songs than of Heathers songs um, once Heathers is complete I am probably going to um, start um, reaching out doing other uh, animatics maybe picking songs from musicals I like um, songs from movie musicals I like you never know. I, I, I like a lot of musicals, so yeah. Um, one fun little thing I plan on doing with the animatics, uh, provided I have the time to, is I want to do a uh, roughly 10 second section of like actual animation um, versus um, just the animatic. Um, so at some point at a, you know, like, um, just 10 seconds of lines or 10 seconds of scenery, I plan on doing a full, uh, actual bit of animation. Um, it, it will be rough, obviously, not finished animation, because, yeah, I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> um... I also was thinking about doing kind of a drink and draw thing where I review movies um, that I watch uh, preferably, preferably in the theater, maybe some nostalgia type movies and see if they hold up, give my opinion pros or cons, uh, maybe suggest uh, watching or not. Um, while drawing, say, a character from the movie, or reviewing, I, oh, I also plan on hopefully reviewing comics, which I will probably also be doing fan art during, even if it's just a sketch, because, uh, yeah, I'm, I've been watching, um, like, I guess they called the comic skate type, uh, people, like, uh, I think it's Captain Cummings and uh, Diversity in Comics and I, I've been watching Ethan Van Scriver uh, work and his critiques for things. Um, I, I, I definitely wouldn't mind doing art critiques and suggestions. Um, uh, I am in school though so uh, that takes up a lot of my time and I've got ADHD like something fierce so I am kind of between a lot of things. Uh, I also uh, am uh, trying to work on a slowly burgeoning uh, writing career of sorts. Um, if you want to check out my writing, uh, my author name is Aria Mars on Wattpad, Wattpad, however it's pronounced. Um, And, let's see, uh, yeah, I actually have, uh, I said this in one of the previous ones when I was talking about my plans, uh, I have a bottle of really inexpensive wine sitting over on my desk just waiting for me to, uh, sit through, uh, Justice League. I need to actually do that. God I swear if this shows up as a whole n third separate video, okay good, it's only two currently, thank god. Um, 
Yeah, I've got a bottle of wine waiting for me to watch Justice League, and I'll probably end up drawing Superman from that. I, I like drawing Superman. It won't be the Henry Cavill Superman, though, probably. <laughs> It'll just be Superman, like from the comics, it, or animation. I don't know. Uh, my art style, obviously, has kind of swayed towards the animation side of things in its uh, relative simplicity. Um, let's see. What else did I touch on? I already touched on the animatics and my plans for that. I touched on uh, the critiques, which I would not mind doing. I also touched on drawing and review. Um, yeah, I've I'm thinking about taking up uh, also reviewing comics. Um, while I, for the most part, enjoy watching uh, diversity in comics, I can't necessarily agree with everything. Sometimes I think it's just kind of really reading into some of the uh, writing. Um, and. I think there, I, I mean, I know there are comic book roasts, but I think there are, I am going to break this. My graphics card is better than this, as is my RAM. I built this computer. As I watch and wait for this uh, thing to... I'm probably gonna end up just changing the information on the video and just being like, hey, this all is what I'm planning on doing, and I don't know what you'll end up hearing. Uh, as far as comics go, I've been into comics since I was like 11 or 12. Um, I got into them initially with like X-Men, um, I was also, I also rather enjoyed Vampirella, um, X-Force, X-Factor, Excalibur, I especially liked Excalibur because it was kind of silly fun. Um, my best friend introduced me to ElfQuest, which is, um, basically what this piece I'm working on is inspired by. It's actually the main character, Cutter. Um, because it recently ended. Uh, actually, the last issue came out this past Wednesday, and it's it's definitely a progressive comic, but it's not nearly as in your face with the progressiveness as superhero comics are sort of becoming. And I will admit that current comics, especially from what I've seen in Marvel comics, they are kind of becoming very ham-fisted with the, uh, uh, not diversity, but pandering. Now, little background on me. I am, uh, Mexican. Um, I'm also, uh, bi, though I am currently, um, dating a guy. Um, that doesn't stop me from being bi, that doesn't suddenly turn me straight. I am still bi, I still find chicks hot. Um, and yes, I say, I find chicks hot. I have no problem calling a chick a chick. I know I have no problem being called a chick. Uh, a girl, lady, whatever. Um, I am definitely more worried about overt racism than covert racism. I will, I, I would take a lot more offense to being called a cockroach or a spick than somebody expecting me to know a recipe for mole, you know? I mean, not all Mexicans know a recipe for mole, not all women know how to cook, <laughs> but you know, most microaggressions I don't care about. Um, I've never really cared about seeing myself in any medium. Um, when I was, uh, 
12 or 13 and getting into comics, I most related to Rogue, and I absolutely fell in love with Gambit. Um, I, I'm kind of empathic, I guess. I, I tend to pick up other people's feelings very easily. Whether this is because I read their body language better than some people, or whether, you know, they send out different waves is up to whoever to decide. I really don't care. All I know is I pick it up. <laughs> um, and it affects me. Um, the... But I want... I mean, I, I've noticed that kind of for the most part, most of the people who are roasting these comics are probably straight white guys. <laughs> so I kind of wanted to throw my metaphorical, you know, uh, minority checklist hat in the uh, ring to kind of give my own opinions. Uh, the first... Um, Marvel comics that I actually picked up in a long time were, uh, I think it's Rogue and Gambit. Um, unfortunately, I also have ADHD, so my memory is crap. I probably already mentioned that in this video. <laughs> yeah! Um, anyway. Um, but I want to throw my minority checklist hat in the ring, um, because I'm not an SJW. Um, I do not consider myself a social justice warrior in any way. Um, I'm pro-choice. I'm... But it's not my choice. Uh, I have two daughters of my own. I love them. Uh, if either of them happen to choose to have an abortion... Uh... Not everyone's made to be a mother, I guess, is the way I look at it. And I, I have also, you don't want mothers who don't want their kids. Because during development, it can cause extreme long-term issues. Like, they will be, there are more children who are in the womb and they're being, they, I mean, everything from, in them comes from their mother. I mean, yes, half their chromosomes are from the father, but that's pretty much the end of it. Everything nutrition-wise, hormone-wise, um, whatever comes from the mother. And when a mother is in high stress mode from not wanting to have a kid, throughout the pregnancy that leads to a higher chance that the child will be born premature. Um, it also makes it more likely that the child will ha be socially stunted, um, that they'll have problems with socializing, They're, they'll get lower grades. There are just too many negatives to curse an innocent with. Um, so, yeah. I'm pro-choice, it's not my choice. Um, I'm pro-gun, you know. I agree with gun control, but I am definitely, you know, yo, I personally think everyone should have one who is responsible and able to handle it. Um, both for their own personal protection and for the protection of our own freedoms. I am very much into freedom of speech. Uh, if anyone has seen Demolition Man, Demolition Man, uh, with Sylvester Stallone and Wesley Snipes, I very much share the opinion of Edgar Friendly. Um, I do believe privilege exists. It's not a huge deal to me, though. Because life's unfair. 
and if you believe life is unfair, then you kind of believe in privilege yourself. <laughs> um, because that's just how it is. I mean, that's the whole reason there is privilege, is because life's unfair and people suck. That's why a woman might feel the just natural urge to look over their shoulder at night because they never know what's going to be there. They never know if someone's going to jump out at them and, you know, grab them into a alley and rape them, or, and it's privilege why girls shouldn't leave their drinks alone in a bar or a club because there is a high likelihood that they might be roofied if they didn't have to worry about things like that maybe there wouldn't be privilege but people are assholes and life sucks so our life's not fair people suck and life's not fair so that's why I believe in privilege <laughs> um, do I think we're gonna get rid of it? No, not really because I think life will always be unfair <laughs> um, And as a non-SJW female, um, and for the most part a moderate, I, I think I'd like to, you know, start giving my opinions on comics. Um, I won't necessarily, you know, seek out obvious ones that are horrendous, though I will say that yeah, I think Squirrel Girl's art could probably be improved on a lot. Um, I'm mostly a DC person uh, anymore. I used to be heavily Marvel, now I'm heavily DC. Um, I think that's because I moved past the whole angsty, the world is against me attitude. Um, I mean, doesn't everyone go through that when they're teenagers? Probably. Um, Uh, I am a huge geek, nerd, take your pick, really doesn't matter. I fall under both. Um, I have a DVD for learning Klingon. I have a redonkulous amount of books behind me. Uh, I play video games, I read comics, I watch anime, I read manga, I <laughs> still watch cartoons. Sometimes, if I think the art's nice, I am very shallow when it comes to art, so... Probably most of my critiques will, you know, of comics will be how they look. Um, uh, I think I said earlier, if this is still the second video, that uh, I am also dabbling in writing. So my thing is Arya Mars, and I think we're on repeat because 